Dr. Kennedy Graham. A point of order, Kennedy Graham. Point of order, Mr. Speaker, a split call. My understanding this is a split uh, call. Yes, the, the Greens only ever have five minutes at this point That's anyway. My so, Normally yes. I'm told it's a split call, so I just wanted to make sure. It, it, it is a five minute call as the Greens' second call is uh, Thank you, on sir. the first reading of these bills. Uh, just to reiterate what the Green Party has already said, namely that we will be supporting this bill into Select Committee. Um, our enthusiasm, it's, it's important that our enthusiasm does not run beyond that. Uh, and imply any, um, any uh, unreflective uh, commitment to innovation for its own sake uh, and to reflect upon the shortcomings, constitutional, certainly procedural, bordering on the constitutional shortcomings by which this bill lands itself in the House in front of us today. Let's reflect on the, briefly, uh, on the history of this bill. Um, there, was, there is a New Zealand firm that's highly regarded, and I participated in that regard for the, for the firm Rocket Lab, that has developed a technology. The technology is putting a payload into space from New Zealand. That in itself, on the face of it, is a good thing. The company dealt with the United States and with New Zealand government departments, largely MB, for the better part of 18 months to get to an agreement by which it would be able to operate along the lines intended with a, uh, a, a missile launch from the East Coast sometime in mid-2016. It was discovered very late in the piece, to their consternation, that the nature of this technology fell within the missile technology regime, control regime, category one, which then triggered a policy requirement on the part of the United States that there should be a bilateral treaty with any other host country that, that fell within that category. New Zealand therefore did. This then followed with negotiations between the New Zealand government and the US government for the better part of six months, which were not made public, to get a bilateral treaty, which is essentially a template, taken from the United States shelf, dusted off, strange numbers on the top right that had not been removed, and the words clearly New Zealand imprinted, substituting for other, whatever other country might have been relevant to the last time around. A bilateral treaty between the United States and New Zealand. Governing essentially, the national security interests of the United States. <coughs> Suddenly, that, that treaty went through Cabinet in December, from memory, not announced. Suddenly in June, the MB website emblazons itself with a better part of 80 to 100 pages of hyperactive enthusiasm about this, announcing also that the Foreign Affairs Committee of the Parliament had the matter, had opened hearings on the matter. It had not. It did so the following day, on the basis basically of 24 hours' notice from the government department by way of a public website. Yet another humiliation of the Parliament of New Zealand, by no means the first, no means the first in the last year or two, but another one. The Foreign Affairs Committee had this treaty on its desk within a few days of a public website from MB. The chairman announced to the members that we would be focusing on it very quickly and very earnestly. I evinced criticism of the procedure at the time. The committee actually was shown the bill in closed session to allay whatever concerns there might be. I'll just conclude on the fact 
that there was initially a planned launch date. It was August 2016. And I regret, do I apologise on behalf of the New Zealand Parliament to the New Zealand public, that because of a constitutional nicety of getting something through the New Zealand legislature, they can't proceed with the launch date on the time that suits them. There is a great deal in this bilateral treaty through the treaty examination stage and the domestic implementation that requires a lot of thorough checking and a lot of careful reflection because the New Zealand national security is as important as the US national security.